Generating is a term used to explain the development of a line or a surface. A point moving through space generates a line. A line moving through space generates a surface. In mechanisms, a wide variety of surfaces is employed. But here we consider principally those surfaces used in connection with gears for transmitting motion from one shaft to another. When two shafts on parallel axes are to turn in opposite directions at a definite ratio, there are several ways in which this can be done. One way is to use friction disks of the desired ratio. But friction disks cannot be relied upon to transmit uniform angular motion. Slippage occurs as soon as sufficient load is applied because the disks lack positive driving contact. Another method is to use pulleys of the same diameter ratio and connect them with a cross belt. This method is more dependable, but here again, the lack of positive driving contact causes belt slippage to occur as the load is increased. Experience has proven that properly designed and generated gears present the best method of transmitting uniform angular motion. It must be realized, however, that the shape of the gear teeth is a very important factor in the smoothness of the transmitted motion. Because of its many valuable properties, the involute is the most practical tooth shape for transmitting smooth and uniform angular motion. A point on a crossed belt, which moves from one pulley to the other without slippage, will trace an involute curve. A template has been attached to the larger pulley. Observe the movement of the point on the cross belt. As the belt moves on the pulleys, the point traces the involute profile. By attaching another template to the smaller pulley, you can see this involute being traced by the point. The pulleys, therefore, are the base circles from which these involutes are developed. If these templates are cut to the traced curves, they produce mating involute profiles, which will transmit uniform angular motion when the connecting belt is removed. As each involute profile is but one side of a single tooth, motion can only be transmitted through a short arc of rotation. For continuous uniform angular motion, succeeding Equally spaced and parallel profiles must be provided. Here, some of these profiles are traced by red dots equally spaced on the cross belt. If motion is to be transmitted in both directions, similar profiles must be provided for the other sides of the teeth. The resulting gears will have smooth, uniform angular motion because each pair of mating profiles comes into contact before the preceding pair loses contact. By placing the original friction disks on the same centers, we can see that they are the pitch circles of these gears and their center distance is the sum of the two pitch radii. Their common tangent is perpendicular to the line of centers and the point of tangency is the pitch point of the pitch circles. Now, if we add the original pulleys of the same diameter ratio, they are the base circles from which the mating profiles were developed. The belt represents the line of action and crosses the center line at the pitch point. The pressure angle is the angle formed by the line of action and the common tangent to the pitch circles. Pressure angle is determined by the center distance and the base circle diameters. A cardinal virtue of the involute is that it permits a change in center distance without affecting velocity ratio or conjugate tooth action. When we change the center distance, the base circle diameters remain the same, 
but we create a new line of action, a new pitch point, and new pitch circles. By placing the same involute profiles on the increased center distance, you can see that contact takes place farther out on the profiles. Here are the definitions of some of the gear tooth elements as they apply to gears of conventional standard design. Tooth size is commonly expressed as diametral pitch, which represents the number of teeth per inch of pitch diameter of a gear. Each gear has a three inch pitch diameter, but the difference between outside diameters, the number and size of the teeth is obvious. Tooth size can also be expressed as circular pitch. This is the distance between corresponding profiles of adjacent teeth as measured on the pitch circle. Circular pitch equals pi divided by the diametral pitch. The addendum is the radial distance from the pitch circle to the outside circle. For standard full length teeth, it is equal to the reciprocal of the diametral pitch, which is of course one divided by the diametral pitch. The dedendum is the radial distance from the pitch circle to the bottom of the tooth space. It equals addendum plus clearance. The circular tooth thickness of a standard gear is the length of arc between the two sides of a tooth as measured on the pitch circle. The cordal tooth thickness is the length of the cord subtending a circular thickness arc. Contact between mating involute profiles always takes place on the line of action, the red line. With the involute at the left as the driver, it can be seen that as the point of contact moves along the line, its distance from tangent point A increases, while its distance from point B decreases at a correspondingly uniform rate. Mating involute profiles slide upon each other at a varying rate during contact. By dividing both base circles into an equal number of spaces and drawing tangent lines from the division points to the profiles, we can see this sliding action. Note that the rate of sliding is the greatest when the end of one tooth contacts its mate near the base circle. We will now reinsert the belt. You will notice when division points on both involute profiles make contact, they lie in this common tangent to the base circles or line of action. This shows that the line of action is the path of contact of involute gears. Here we have increased the center distance of the same mating involute profiles. You can see that contact occurs farther out from the base circles and that because of this, the rate of sliding is decreased. This diagram shows the relationship of the base circles, line of action, and pressure angle of two gears operating on their standard center distance at a pressure angle of 20 degrees. Since the line of action is tangent to both base circles, perpendiculars drawn from the gear centers to the points of tangency are the base radii and can be calculated by this formula. The effect of a change in pressure angle on the total length of line of action is shown by this diagram representing two pairs of gears operating on the same center distance but at different pressure angles. A, the tangent point of the smaller base circle and the line of action is a point of origin of the involute of the smaller gear.